chat. Another game week, another week where we fall further and further from the position we held only three weeks ago. Welcome back to Matchday Report. Preston North End take on Ipswich Town away from home and lose 4-2. What a surprise. Now, of course, Ipswich are a fucking quality side. There's absolutely no denying the absolute brilliance behind Ipswich and Kieran McKenna's side this season. They are brilliant. They deserve to be running away with the league. In my opinion, Ipswich look better than Leicester. Of course, we just played Leicester and Ipswich back-to-back, -back, you know, the table leaders. And then we're going to go on to play Southampton and Millwall and Hullock during this month. It's a very tricky month. Um, there were moments in the game where I felt, yeah, that was alright what we did. But then there's also moments where I was like, this is why we are nowhere near the levels of Ipswich and Leicester and all those other teams. Because, you know, they just do this where we don't. But yeah, if you can see the stats on screen, they had 16 shots with 10 being on target to our 8-2. and two. In the first half, they had 10 shots with 7 on target. It was either 10 or 12 and 7 with them on target. We don't even get that in a game, let alone the first half. So yeah. Oh. My light bar's flickering. Yeah, so Ipswich, as you can tell, quality, quality in the attack. That's what it's all about. And they managed to maintain the possession at the same time. They're a very well coached and disciplined side and they deserve everything. We didn't even get a single corner. It was not our best display by any means necessary, despite some moments where you was like, yeah, that's not so bad. But yeah, strange, strange, strange. So then, let's talk about our play rating, shall we? Woodman of five. We'll be frustrated to have let in four more goals, but you can't attribute much blame to him for any of them. Kept out Hurst from point blank range in the first half. What more of five? Forced off midway through the first half after going down with an injury. Defending had been hit and miss. Lindsay of five. Tough afternoon against a potent, powerful, pacey attack who were too strong for him at times. Can't fault his efforts. Cunningham of five. Beaten for pace on occasions. Caught up the field for Williams' goal. Kept going, but the testing 90. Six, uh, Potts a six, not quite his industrious best, but perhaps the workload caught up with him a bit. Up against the dangerous play in Davis, who asked constant questions. Lidson a six, went into the book early, had to tread careful for the rest of the game, got stuck in, put the ball in the box for Whiteman's goal. Um, Brown a five, back in the team after missing Wednesday through illness, and it was intense in his midfield work, but loose with some of his passing. Withdrawn at half time on a booking. Uh, Brady a four. We'll discuss the elephant in the room in a moment. His ball over the top led to Peony's equaliser, but the Irishman struggled in the first half and was taken off at the break. Williams, who picked Brady's pocket for the second if such goal, had the beating of him down that side. Mads a 7, back in the team and on the score sheet with a composed finish. Used the ball relatively well and carried a threat, but fatigued in the second half. I don't agree with a 7 personally. Yeah, sure he scored a goal, but for large portions of the game, Mads looked completely out of it and unaware. For their first goal, I think it was when they scored from that corner. Uh, it was either the first or second they scored from the corner. Mads just completely let the player go and the player goes on to score the goal. They used the exact same corner routine they ha they've been using in every game and it's caught us out despite us saying we've practiced it. So unless Mads completely forgot to mark the player or whatever else like that, yeah, Mads cost us a goal there. Um, Will Keener 5 put himself about and looked after the ball when Peeney got in into his feet. Go away. But the number 7 didn't get much change out of Ipswich defenders. Uh, Osmajic, a 5, made a nuisance of himself in the lead-up to Frokio's goal, so a couple of chances got begging, made away at half-time. Substitutes Bauer, a 5, thrust into the action before half an hour, made a couple of important interventions, but didn't cover himself in glory for Ipswich's third and fourth goal. Whiteman, a 7, brought a calmness to Peony's play in possession, got himself on the score sheet soon after coming on to restore some hope, and Whiteman was quality throughout the rest of the game. Holmes a six did a job down the team did a job for the team down the left around the hard yards but couldn't do much to impact the game offensively. Miller a six some direct runs at Ipswich's back line after being introduced at half time added a spot but couldn't inspire a comeback. And lastly Woodburn a five there goes me light brought on for the final 20 minutes uh, had to be in the bulk of his work oh there it is <laughs> oh okay off the ball finished a late swerving shot wide. Okay so Ryan Law's words shall we let's take a look at this. I was obviously. Oh, yeah, I was obviously disappointed with the first half. You can't give a good team like Ipswich three goals in the first half, and we have done. We knew what was coming with the first one. We showed it them yesterday and worked on it all week. Okay, we watched it back with them, and that's the disappointing part because uh, Peter Murphy works hard on them and gives them all the information. It was probably a lack of communication with that goal. A player thinking someone was going to block the pass, and they've got attracted to the man, not the ball. That has been a bit of a killer. The second one, the kid cannot just run 60 yards and put it into the bottom corner. The third one epitomised our afternoon, I think. A corner, second phase, third phase, it doesn't come out. And it's a tapping where we are nowhere near numbers in the box. We made a few changes at half-time. It came out a lot better. Then when we're really pushing the second half, they do us on the counter, if you like, and come out with the ball when we should win those duels. So overall, a tough afternoon. I do believe in the second half, after we go 3-2, uh, we just lost it. We lost all desire to continue to win the ball and win the game. 
which is a massive shame considering it, if you come back to 3-2 and you're still in the game, you've got a chance to at least take a point, never mind three. So the fact that we just dropped the attitude as soon as we hit 3-2 is very depressing. Uh, we asked for a bit more desire and belief second half, and the lads did that. At 3-2, you've always got a fighting chance of getting a draw, but we didn't come out with the ball on the right, and you cannot leave good plays unmarked because they punish you. That is certainly what happened today. The lads have just got to watch the goal. The lads have just watched the goals back, but I won't see them for a few days now, and they can't dwell on it, nor me. They are all in admittance that it wasn't good enough for any of the goals, which is pleasing for me as the manager, but yeah, anyone can just... They say, said it for the last three games. They've all said, yeah, we're not good enough, but they've not done anything about it because they, they keep making the same mistakes. A lot of people probably thought we wouldn't get anything out of the game, but I did and I wanted my players to. It's probably been one of the toughest weeks since I've been here in terms of goals we've conceded and how we conceded them. I was pleased for large parts of Leicester and large parts of today, second half especially, but if you want to do anything in the division, you've got to be better all around. <laughs> and if we're going to have a soft underbelly like we did today with the goals, it is not going to fit, so that is up to me to make sure it doesn't happen. The lads are aware of that and we'll have to re reset now. I've looked at the table, we're still third, which is a massive positive, but the week has been a grueler, so we'll have to take our medicine and move on quickly. I know we're still third, and it's amazing that we are still third, but at the same time, you've gone from being 7 points clear to 7 points trailing and 10 points clear in first place. It's a big, big drop to have. Um, okay, Law made four changes on the day, which included the captain Alan Brown coming back into the starting lineup after missing the midweek game. Northern's manager was left to regret that call post match as he admitted the Irishman wasn't in ideal condition. Uh, not really, nor when he asked if Brown was fine. That's my bad. I probably shouldn't have played him, but the captain wanted to play. He wasn't feeling well before the game. We asked him, but he's never going to. But he's never going to say. I needed to take that out of his hands. You could you could see first half he wasn't at it. He did all right, but when you've got someone of Alan Brown's quality, you want him in and around your team. We thought he'd be okay, but he wasn't. Hence why he went off at half time, and we needed to freshen it up. So that's what we needed to do. We put Keno up there with Milton, and then we had to make changes at half time because it wasn't working. But the lads had been dead on the feet to go 67, 80, 90 minutes against Leicester. We had to make changes, and it wasn't the changes. It was the, the decision making in the game. So yeah, we have to learn from it and move on quickly. Law also saw Jack Watmore fall off after 27 minutes. Watmore was complaining about his hamstring, and again, I had to make a change, but there's no excuses. We've got some players and quality in my squad. In it's quality squad in my eyes. That is us, and we should have it where anyone can. Okay. But the thing is, though. Mm -hmm. well, the thing is, though. If Watmore came up to Law and told him pre hand, that's fine. But Bow was getting stripped into his player's outfit before Watmore even left the pitch or went down complaining, so. I don't know, there could have been communication. Uh, quick injury updates. North End manager Ryan Law provided an update on absentees after the 4-2 loss. Uh, made four changes with McCann dropping out of the matchday squad featuring him in midweek against Leicester. Uh, Andrew Hughes remained unavailable with a car problem. I don't know why McCann was unavailable then. Uh, Alan Brown, Grand Story uh, illness. Club captain Alan Brown returned to the side. Law admitted post-match he shouldn't have played. After missing Leicester uh, match four days prior with a bug, North End's manager defender what more forced off 27 minutes drive away. Okay, so this is what Law had to say directly. Uh, Ali McCann picked up a niggle from Wednesday. Okay, and what more was complaining about his hamstring again? I had to make the changes, but there's no excuses. We've got good players, quality squad. That is us, and we should have it anywhere when anyone's stepping into the job. Story's still not well. We were hoping to get him down here, but he's it's a good job we didn't. If we'd have looked at putting him in, it's not fair, but when you've got good players who've been playing well for you, you want them in and around the team. There is no disrespect to the lads that came in. I thought they did a good job, but whether it's injuries, illness, there's no excuse. We just weren't quite at it uh, and gifted a good team some good goals. As for Hughes, who's mainly uh, been in the starting lineup, one fit alongside Lindsay and Story, Law learned the full extent of his blow next week uh, following a chat with Fidio Matt Jackson. Uh, me and Jack all will go through it Monday. It's a little bit of a complicated one, so it could be a couple of weeks, 10 days or a week. We are waiting to find out if he's due a PRP, which is an injection to help the healing. We'll probably know a bit more next week on how long it's going to be, so hopefully not long. So in other words, Hughes is out for a little bit of time. So that's not what we would like to hear, especially when we've got games coming up against teams that can be aggressive on sides where Hughes plays. Uh, now, what I said before, let's address the elephant in the room. In Brady. He's received a hell of a lot of shit over the game, uh, over the past three games, sorry. Because I read that uh, for the last three games we've played Brady at left wing back, we've conceded seven goals, Not sco I think we scored like twice, but yeah. In other words, since Brady's been starting, that was when we've had the downfall. 
I'm not going to blame it all on Brady. I don't like singling a player out. I know I made a tweet as well myself singling him out, but, and I said I don't like to single players out, but it needs addressing. That Brady is not a left wing back. The problem is with Brady, he gets played mainly because he's a more senior player, and a season pro, you could say. Whereas Kean Best is still a little lad and he's afraid of getting him injured. That's why Law's not playing best over Brady. He's afraid of the injury problems. He doesn't want to ruin Kean's career, which I can respect and I can understand. However, at the same time, I do think that Brady's not fit to play that position. If you're going to play Brady, play him in his position, not out of his position. Yes, Brady can put in that wonderful ball once again that is going to guarantee, almost guarantee a goal. He did it uh, in the in I think it was the Rotherham game. I think I believe it was when Lindsay scored that header. He did it at Luton last year. There's plenty of moments where Brady's had a quality ball in the ball that he played over the top that eventually found the goal through Mads. That was another one from Brady, but at the same time that was a bit of a, sc a scrappy goal. That one, were, that were a lucky one. Yeah, he can play that ball, but what else can he do? Because every other time anyone ran past him, he was left for dead. He could not catch up with anybody because he has no pace, he has no power, he can't defend to save his life. Sure, he can attack, but not to the best of standards. So, why are we wasting time and energy trying to get Brady on the pitch and staying on the pitch all this time in a position that he doesn't play? If you want to play Brady, try and adjust the formation a little bit instead of being stubborn. This was the exact same problem we had last year, uh, of being stubborn in the, in the position and the formation of players. Yeah, I get it. You want to play your brand of football, but if the player doesn't work in that position, then do not force them to play in that position. You can't expect to put him in there and him to grow into the role in three weeks. It took part a year to become that right wing back we know him as, etc. There's plenty of work to be done here. Um, and with Brady in that position, we're going nowhere, unfortunately. So I'd like, if Brady's going to play, I'd like to see him played in a proper position where he can actually do damage as a threat in the attack and not trying to force him to defend against players that are going to leave him for dead. Because otherwise he's going to pick up silly bookings and he's just going to keep getting more abuse as he lets more players run past him and will eventually concede. It's not the role for Brady. And that's why he's getting a lot of abuse. And that's why he's playing so poorly. It's just, he's, he's been left out to dry there. It's, it's a problem. But regardless, thanks to for watching. Again, depressing result again. We, did, we expected it, but yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, thanks to for watching and we'll see you after the international break when we take on Millwall.